I think we're going to start with 20 bottles I picked up in late 2016. So that's pretty much how old my oldest bottles are. Timbuktu, Eau de Beau from L'Occitane, Histoire de Parfum 1740. So we're looking at about five years old. Now, Patchouli 24 from Le Labo, which I don't know if I'll keep, and Idol from Luban, which will come into the middle of the frame shortly. These were um, acquired early 2017, so now we're looking uh, at some bottles that I've had since then. Egoist and Ultra Zest I distinctly remember purchasing together. I think I probably got them from Fragrance X or something like that. Uh, Jovan Sex Appeal, just around the corner at my discount pharmacy. I still like that. $7 was the bottle. And for my birthday that year, I bought... I had two Comme de Garçon, two Man and Avignon from the Incense series. Not long after that, I got Antaeus and I ordered Patrick. Uh, lovely Fougere from Fragrances of Ireland. My daughter gifted me Fahrenheit which I always loved anyway. I just never thought to buy it for myself for some reason. Uh, Mugler Cologne. These are all probably Fragrance X purchases. Uh, Meharis was gifted to me um, probably not long after I did a, a review of that compared to Musk Ravageur. I also purchased the current Lagerfeld Classic, which I, I still love. And 2017 Guilty Absolute was released. I bought a 50ml bottle and secondhand bottle of Sartorial Top 3 Fragrance. Beautiful Ombre Sultan from Serge Lutan. My first Serge and my first and only Dior Privé Ombre Nuit. Impulse buyer, woody mood, but no regrets at all. And the wonderful Lamat. After I polished off a fair size decant, I had to get a bottle. At that time, it was my most expensive bottle. Heritage EDT, my first Guerlain. Slumber House Ore, my first purchase from Lucky Scent, as it happens. And my beautiful Eau Sauvage Parfum. I'm so lucky to have a 2012 bottle. Prada Amber Porom Intense was a blind buy, but I love that perfume. I hate the bottle. Al Oud from Lattison, gorgeous, spicy, under, underrated Lattison, I think. This is uh, Bervuvu from January Scent Project. Uh, I think I'll mention any bottles that I have not reviewed. I've, I've reviewed most of these. That's Absolute Polessoir, which is, I believe, discontinued now. The wonderful... Declaration from Cartier, my first Cartier, and the gorgeous Diptyque 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain. This is 5 o'clock Eau de Jambre from Serge. I don't know if I'm going to end up keeping that one. And my Immortel Love Sable from Annick Goutal. This is 1969 from Histoire de Parfum. Again, one I really like, but not sure whether I will end up keeping that bottle. And as you can see, the iconic La du Desert Marocain from Tower. I will keep this because I do like it, but when it's empty, I'm not so sure I'm going to be replacing it. My first Caron a Troisième Homme, beautiful scent, beautiful masculine, spicy, woody, lavender. And Santal Majuscule from Serge Lutan, gorgeous sandalwood. The wonderful, dirty, spicy, animalic Salome from Papillon Artisan Parfum. The uh, next two were birthday gifts in 2018, I think. Uh, Ombre 114 from Histoire de Parfum and Safran Troublant from Lattison. My number one current fragrant, fragrance at the moment, Abit Rouge EDT. And this one here is Vetiver Oriental. I'm not sure I'm going to keep that one either. So now um, we're 
in 2019. This is Tabak Vert from Rogue Perfumery. I did go on a bit of a Caron spree and bought Yatagan. This one, as much as I like it, I don't think I need to have it. Uh, Decay of the Angel from Timothy Hahn edition. Beautiful scent. So I've done reviews of these ones. This is Calligraphy Rose, one of my favourite rose scents. And I had to have Poron Om, the Caron. I love the dry down on that fragrance. This is Ganymede, one of my most notable blind buys, I guess, from Marc Antoine Barois. Dervish from Rogue and got very cheaply Ideal Cologne, Lom Ideal Cologne from Guerlain. Uh, I actually really like that scent because I mean it was really cheap anyway and the beautiful gorgeous succulent Amouage Fate Woman. So now we're moving on to fragrances that I picked up when I went to Italy. So this one I bought in Cinque Terre and I, you can only buy it from a few places. It's called Guvano Number no. 4 from Gotcha de Byron. It's beautiful fig and sandalwood. Uh, this is Equipage Geranium which I bought in Turin when I was there. I acquired a bottle, that's actually, you can't see the name on the side, that's Derby from Guerlain. Bottle of Serge Noir from Serge Luton. This is Incensi from Villoresi, which I bought at his um, store in Florence itself. That was a great, great experience. And Gorse, not sure I'll, I'll keep that one either. I bought that one in Venice. And I bought the newer Eau Sauvage Parfum, uh, my last day in Rome, actually. So I've got a kind of a backup for my original Eau Sauvage Parfum. Still in 2019, that's Vani by Mona Diorio. Beautiful vanilla scent. Louis was my last purchase of 2019. And now we move into 2020. Pandemic year, comfort buying. That's Tolu from Ormond Jane. Another Olivia Giacobetti classic, Zing from Latisan. This is one of my summer staples. It's Gelan Om EDP. I really like that. That came on a recommendation from an Instagram follower. Uh, patchouli Nobile from Nobile 1942, one of my favorite patchoulis and one of my favorite discoveries and blind buys of 2020 was Anna Fritz Classical. I had smelled Habanita before and I fell in love with it last year and needed to have that bottle. Boy was my pandemic lockdown birthday present to myself, my first Chanel exclusive and I have no regrets whatsoever. I love that scent. And then I blind bought Patchouli Intense, New York Intense at the same time. I didn't blind buy New York Intense, but I have no regrets about those. They're fantastic scents. This is Eau Popinux from Santa Maria Novella. The classic vetiver from Guerlain. And Rochus Femme. Now, I want you guys to tell me what version bottle that is, because I've seen them with black caps. This is a clear uh, sort of ribbed cap, um, and that was very cheap, but I love that scent, and I'll have to do a review on that very soon. This is Mem from Bogue, and as you can see, I did a lot of online therapeutic shopping last year. Tabac Blonde from Caron. This, is, this was another blind buy as well, Asimo Les Orangers from Parfum d'Empire. The beautiful Pompelloon, which was a result of blind sniffing it, and I just fell in love with that wonderful grapefruit. Helmet Lang Eau de Parfum. I had a travel sprayer which was running out, and I heard this got discontinued, so I snapped up one of the last bottles in Australia. 1962 from Floris, very much a house I want to explore more. They seem to have great stuff. And I've heard that that has been discontinued now. So I hope that's not true, but I'm glad I've got a big bottle. This is the wonderful Sevi Alob from La Saint Parfumeur. I wore this when I was in Italy and I had to get a bottle and I have such beautiful scent memories with this fragrance 
Next is Alana Chist from Caron. I'm going to do a review soon of that one. Uh, very, very surprisingly underrated because I think this is a very good perfume that probably doesn't get enough love. The wonderful Ambre Russe. I had a decant for a long, long time and I finally got a full bottle of that. This is a mini, but it's still a bottle, I guess. This is Floris Leather Oud, one of my favourite levers. Um, this is well worth checking out if you like levers. The gorgeous floral musky musk tonkin from Parfum d'Empire. This is Santos Concentre. That was a blind sniff and I needed a bottle once I'd sniffed it. From Filigree and Shadow, My Most Meaningful Relationships. And this is Kier Eternel from Jardin de France. My first purchase of 2021, Oud Palau from Diptyque. Wonderful Oud Rose. My favourite Oud Rose, in fact. And a little bit of a unicorn Zonka in its old packaging. I was looking for one for a, for a while and a very gorgeous friend came through with the goods. A vintage Eau de Cologne number no. 5 from Chanel from the mid 80s. That's actually a splash bottle. And my last purchase of 2021, French Lover from Frederick Marle.